We have all been there where you find this amazing product which works great, it's totally free, and then you're like, huh, I wonder if there is a GitHub library for this. So you go to GitHub and you find out, oh, it is actually open source. You start it, then you're like, oh, maybe I will read something about it and see how it works. You generally go down to README, but uh, Readmes these days end up being a lot more about product publicity and marketing rather than actually for developers. So you keep going down and you find out somewhere that, hey, there's a development guide and like one for documentation for more details if you want to check it out. Uh, you open documentation and documentation does have quite a lot of detail, but it's not as easy to read. Over time, it also ends up being out of date. So what I like to do is I go to like the project directory and I press the dot, which takes you to github.dev, where you can see the whole project. I used to clone the projects locally, but over time I realized that I just have so many stale projects locally running. And this allows me to clone the project as it is right now on the master or main branch. Uh, and then I can browse around and see exactly how it's going on, uh, how they have set up the project. You can see all the source files, you can see all the packages, different readmes between different uh, folders in here. But you essentially get like a complete copy of the project and you can play around with it. This is great, but it takes a lot of time for you to build context around this. And oftentimes, uh, the way I learn is I generally go to these repos and I'm looking for a specific thing or uh, I'm interested in how they did solve something specific. Like in this example, I love how Excalibur can build everything in here on the local machine. It's not really actually sending anything to anybody right now because I'm not in a collaboration mode. I'm not sharing anything. And all of this is happening on the local machine. So the way I would have done that is actually yeah, stayed here and try to find that out. But then we had new LLMs, and with LLMs came the ability to ask them questions. And GitHub added this chat with Copilot tool where you click on it uh, on the repo, it automatically use the repo as a source in here, and you can ask anything in here. You can pick the model uh, with different models that are available on public, and then you can ask it any question that you have. The trouble here, what ends up happening is, when you ask this question, any question, it's gonna do it at the same time. I have some demo questions in here, so I'm just gonna use one of those is what I'm looking for is what's the state management library. So when I ask this question, you see what's gonna do, it's gonna connect to this repo, get the data into a database probably where it can easily do keyword and semantic based queries. It's gonna query it and then depending upon how good that whole search pipeline is, which includes query reformulation, semantic database that they have, anything around this speed of this getting and putting all this data into a database as well, all of those will give you answer, and it might be that you find out that the answer is uh, correct or incorrect depending upon how good the search happens. So in this example, it's giving me, it's a yarn package. It checked the package JSON, uh, only lists two dev dependencies, does not declare a runtime state management packaging, and it says there's no single state management. So what you'll find is, uh, let me show you, I tried this a few different times, and another time it also said there's no single state management, but this is the real answer where it actually has uh, the stand. I've never used this library, but that's the library it's being used. Uh, but again, as I said, most of these searches depend a lot on how much uh, did the model spend time on this, how much, how good was the retrieval system in here. Uh, any kind of questions that you're trying to ask in here will depend a lot around a lot of different factors which are kind of out of your control. And uh, I'm not trying to give you, <laughs> I don't have a solution for all those controls. Whatever I found out recently is uh, this thing called Code Wiki that was released by Google, where they have just a new way of doing this, where rather than you having to go in and ask the questions, they essentially plug in the repository uh, to Gemini in here. So these are some sample examples of the libraries that they have, but you can take in essentially any public repo that is present in here. Uh, you, the new private repo functionality is coming soon. But essentially what it does is it reads the public repo that you have and automatically generates the documentation. Uh, it always ups to date, so every time a PI is merged, it automatically will find out the relevant documentation and update it. It also links it back to the code. Uh, and the best thing that I love about this is it generates the diagrams. Diagrams is something that I really, I'm a very visual learner, so I like to see the information coming together in a way where I can see how it's working. One of the thing, first things that I do when I go to a new code base or I'm working on a new feature is I create a diagram of that either in my head or I try to map it down onto Excalibur. That's why I like this tool. Um, other thing in here, you can chat with your code base, find what you need. Um, low latency, high, high quality. High quality is questionable. We will figure it out. I guess we'll, when people use it, they can tell the quality bar. But I'm sure they tested this internally and uh, found it's better than 
uh, whatever the existing things are. So to see it in action, I actually used to just, I passed in Xcali draw. It, UI is actually simple. I don't think you need to even go through that. You just pass in the GitHub URL in here. Um, so that generated this repository. So now you see how this documentation is essentially very different than what we saw on the Xcali draws homepage. This documentation is a lot about marketing, but the documentation we are seeing on the wiki page, uh, code wiki page is much better and like actually generated uh, and it is actually pretty good. I went through this a few times. You can see it's like uh, organized the page into different examples and you can talk about UI component and rendering in here. Uh, you can talk about integration examples. It's a complete single page uh, which has all the details in here. The best thing about this, it was generated, as I said, like earlier when any PR gets merged or anytime the code changes are happening to Strepo. So you don't have to worry about doing the search in here and search latency taking a lot of time. So all of the content is here. You can start reading these things. The best thing that I do like about this is the chat feature in here. And I went to the chat feature and uh, asked it a question about the same question. What's the state management library? So the thing that I love about this is not only that it got the correct answer, but it also has exactly where it's being uh, detailed about. So you can click on the link and it will take you to the exact documentation page in there. But if you also want to like, like if I can click it here, it just shows up right here. But if I also want to look at exactly which file it is in, it shows me those as well. I wish it linked it. I think I saw somewhere it did link it, but it seems like right now it's very happy to link it internal. But you can see like all these different architecture diagrams that it drew. So this one is about uh, life cycle in here. Talks about control and rendering, action manager, Xcali draw API. They have an API in here as well. It observes a state. So this is state management where it's happening and the persisting of data is happening in here uh, for the scene and Xcali draw elements. But essentially, yeah, so I love this feature of not only, like I don't have to read the whole uh, document to figure out what's the state management layer in here and how is it being done. I can just see this diagram and get an overview. And if I want to dig into it, I can go dig into it as well. I love how it's like using the components. Oh, this is one of the part where it actually links you directly to the code. So it links you directly to the code on where the code is being used to generate that. So it helps you understand even not only like these examples where you can see, yeah, it like gave you a package JSON where it's like, anyways, the search is not great, but uh, like this example in here, it tells you, you can go to the code repo and do a search but search actually didn't find anything. This is also very interesting. Oh, I guess because the repo, the library is different. It's Jota, it's not even this. Oh, so even this search result was bad as a stand. So it is Zota. I actually don't know if this answer is correct. Somebody will, uh, somebody who's more familiar with Xcalidra's code base will tell me, uh, tell me in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I love this. It's automatically generated. You can see when it was generated based upon which commit history. Uh, and of course, be aware that it can make mistakes. Uh, as I was talking about earlier, there's like this is great, but there are some limitations. The biggest limitation being it doesn't work right now with private repository. It's coming soon. Uh, I would love to try that. Uh, the other thing that I'm trying to see in here is like how often does it work for code which is very large and has like a lot of PRs coming in? Because often what I have found in my testing, not on this product, but generally uh, in a lot of uh, code search tools kind of thing, where it's always outdated very quickly because there's so many changes that are getting, getting merged or these changes end up getting a lot more priority. So the older, more reliable part of the documentation gets out of date or gets overwritten. So I'm very interested to see how this holds up over time. I'm sure the team did their testing, but I would love to see for myself as well. So yeah, this is a fun tool, codewiki.google. I'll put the link in the description, but yeah, let me know, give it a try and let me know how it goes. Thank you.